always remember that good money management is more than just making ends meet. Do not worry if you're not a math wizard and that you're not an expert when it comes to finances. Hi, this is Joe Fernando and I'm from Lab for Financials. Kamusta po mga ka -RFF? Welcome back to our channel. Before anything else, allow me again to say thank you to all of you who have so far subscribed to our official YouTube channel, Lab for Financials, and to those who continue to like and share our videos again from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for all the support. It really means so much to us. And to those who regularly give us pa rin po nice comments, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagsuporta at pagmamahala ay binibigay sa amin dito sa Rampver. Alam niyo po, talagang nababasa namin ang mga komento ninyo isa-isa at talaga naman po nakakapagbigay ito ng inspirasyon para may pagpatuloy namin ang aming mga financial advocacies. And so for today, you're in for another treat as we discuss another very interesting topic this time about managing your salaries. Have you ever wondered paano ba talaga properly mababudget ang ating mga sweldo? Ang dami pong humihingi sa amin ng tips, ng advices on how to be able to make their salaries fit dun sa kanilang lahat ng financial obligations. Alam niyo po, there are no hard and fast rules. To each his own, hika nga. What may work for one may not work for the other. At ang important lamang po is for you to be able to acknowledge that there is a problem and that you are open enough to making adjustments along the way. At yan naman po ang gusto sana nating maitakal sa araw na ito. Ito pong five simple, very basic yet very practical tips on how one can effectively manage their salaries. And so, when you're ready, let us begin. Of course, on top of the list is for you to be able to understand your cash flow. Know your income, know your expenses, and you have to know also your investment targets in your, on a month-to-month -month basis. You have to learn how to budget well. The point is, you have to be able to subtract your total expenses from your income and whatever the result is, if it comes out to be a negative figure, then that only means that you are overspending. And the correct action to take, remedial action to take, obviously, is for you to reduce the level of your expenses until it reaches zero. Pag naman po, the result is a positive figure, then congratulations. That only means that you are still living within your budget. And if it's a positive figure, ang tama naman po natin action to take ay for us to be able to increase naman din po the level of our debt payments kung kayo po kasalukuyan ay may binabayaran mga utang para po mas mapabilis ang pag-fully pay nito and ma-take advantage natin habang may excess cash pa po tayo. Or you can also increase the level and percentage of your savings and investments. Why? Because this exercise only means that you have enough excess funds that's left of your income on a month-to-month -month basis. It's also very important that you know and that you're wise enough to be able to prioritize the essentials from the non-essentials. Again, hindi naman po bawal na bumili at mag-consider bumili ng mga luho or ng mga luxury items na ito. Pero tulad nga po ng sinasabi ni Mr. Rex Mendoza, kurot, wag dakot from our income para hindi po na yuyugyog yung ating mga budget allocations on a month-to-month -month basis. It's also important that you get to stretch out the value of your money. How? By doing a lot of canvassing and research even before you make all of those buying decisions. You also have to practice the concept of delayed gratification, lalong-lalo na pag hindi naman po kalakihan ng mga sweldo natin. By doing so, you'll be forced to make more objective decisions kasi mas dinidelay ninyo yung pag-purchase, lalong-lalo na ng mga big-ticket items. Mas nawaway ninyo ang mga pros and cons at yung mga advantages at disadvantages. And you know what? You will be 
surprise later on pagtagal-tagal marirealize yung ay buti na lang pala hindi ko tinuloy yung pagbili ng kotse ay buti na lang pala hindi ko tinuloy yung pagbili nitong cellphone na to kasi hindi naman pala kailangan kasi kaya ko naman pala even without all of these things alam niyo po maraming pwedeng maging realization pag disiplinado po tayo enough to practice this delayed gratification concept lalong lalo na pag medyo sakto lang po ang sinasahod natin on a monthly basis second tip is for you not to count your eggs that haven't been hatched this is the common mistake of us pinoys bago pa man po nakikredit ang mga sweldo natin sa ating mga bank accounts ay gasos na kagad ang iniisip natin pagpaplano na kagad ng mga binibili natin ang iniisip natin paano na lang talaga mapagkakasya ang mga sinasahod natin kung gastos agad ang pinagpaplanuhan natin di po ba Tandaan nyo po, hindi po porket may stable jobs kayo at may kinikita kayo monthly from all of your companies na pinapasukan is that it can already give you all the right to be able to purchase things mindlessly. Pag sakto lang po ang sweldo ninyo, try to avoid using your credit cards. Tandaan nyo po, yung mga credit limit na nakikita ninyo dyan sa mga cards na yan, hindi nyo po pera yan ha. Pera pa rin po yan ng credit card company na ipinahihiram lang sa atin. And so, don't act, spend, and think as if extension po yan ng inyong income. Kasi hindi po yan inyo in the first place. Kaya pagka na-trap po kayo sa kakagamit nitong mga credit cards na ito, yan po ang simula ng pagkakabaon ninyo from all of these financial obligations. Third tip is for you to avoid committing to new recurring bills. Ano po yun? Yung mga binabayaran natin installment basis, mga amortization natin, you have to be able to program it well. Hindi naman po bawal na mag-get into all of these deals, pero you have to monitor and schedule them well such that para ma-schedule at ma-spread out rin po natin yung lahat ng mga financial obligations na ito. Pag may mga existing pa po kayong binabayaran on a monthly basis, huwag nyo naman po basta-basta rin dagdagan ng mga panibagong obligasyon. Kasi kayo rin po ang mabubulunan eventually. Kayo rin yung masistress at mahihirapan having to budget all of these financial obligations in one month. Fourth tip is for you not to over-invest. Ideally, sinasabi po natin, 10 to 20% daw po of your monthly income ang dapat na itatabi natin for savings and investments. Anything beyond this is nice to have but not necessarily practical to have. Lalong-lalo na pag sapat lang po ang sinisweldo natin on a month-to-month basis. Always remember na hindi po porkit nagsisave at nag invest kayo ay automatically ma-achieve na ninyo ang inyong mga financial goals in the future. Lalong-lalo na pag nag-o-oversave at nag-o-over-invest kayo. Kasi this will be also at the expense naman po ng iba nyo ng mga financial obligations for that particular month. Alam nyo, kahit may naitatabi kayo, it's going to be dysfunctional din pagka wala kayong na properly allocate dun sa iba ninyong mga financial requirements. Kasi from time to time, kinakailangan nyo rin po itong tanggalin from all of these investment instruments. And that way, hindi nyo lang rin po na ma-maximize ang earnings potential from all of these investment products kasi aside from the fact na hindi kayo nakakapag-invest long term, meron pa po kayong mga binabayaran na additional pre-termination fees at charges along the way. And last but not the least tip is for you to be able to get the support of your family. How do you do that? By being very honest. Full disclosure po tayo dapat when it comes to finances sa ating mga pamilya. Hindi po porkit kayo po ang padre de pamilya, ang umaacting na breadwinner ng family, ay talagang ikakargo nyo na po lahat-lahat ng mga expenses na meron ang pamilya ninyo on a month-to-month basis. Try to talk to them well. I-explain nyo po ang financial situation ninyo, lalong-lalo na sa mga anak ninyo. Sila po 
ang magsisilbing mga support system ninyo kasi iisipin nila ay kawawa naman si papa, kawawa naman si mama, hindi pala ganun kalaki ang sinesweldo. So, magbabawas rin ako ng expenses ko. Hindi ko muna bibilin yung gadget na to or hindi muna ako maiinggit sa mga iba kong kaibigan na may mga bagong kotse kasi hindi pa namin kaya, hindi pa namin afford. And in the process, matutulungan kayo ng ibang members of your family para mapababa yung expense level ninyo on a month-to-month basis. Pwede nyo rin pong kausapin yung iba pa pong members of the family who can also try to contribute dun sa mga monthly utility bills ninyo. Pwede sabihin o oh, sino pwede mag-contribute sa tubig, sa electricity, ako naman sa food and sa house rental, at kung ano-ano pa. That way, again, matutulungan kayong ma-unburden ng lahat ng financial obligations na ito at somehow mapagkakasya talaga ninyo ang inyong kinikita every month. Always remember that good money management is more than just making ends meet. Do not worry if you're not a math wizard and that you're not an expert when it comes to finances kasi ang kailangan lang naman po talaga at the end of the day are the basics. Basics of knowing addition and subtraction para po makapag-properly allocate kayo ng inyong financial resources. Always think that the process of planning and budgeting is such a tedious process. But if you focus instead on the value that it can give you over time, then everything else will be worth it. And so, I hope this very short video has somehow help you in one way or another and if you think you have friends and relatives who might be of need of these contents, I hope you can share these to them. Again, this has been June Fernando saying good luck. Thank you so much for all the support and may God bless us all.